something that has changed and I can't remember which version it changed but it's certainly changed since the early versions is saving and loading of sequences <coughs> we've now got the little serial EEPROM working with a lot of help from a few people so thanks very much guys what this allows us to do is this gives us an extra seven banks of eight sequences so we now have 64 sequences in total so when you're loading or saving a pattern you press the load button and then you pick the number of the pattern you want to play you press play and it plays it there you go. what could be simpler when you want to save a pattern you press the store button or save button and you hit the sequence you want to save it in and it's saved nice and simple now to get ad access to the additional banks when you're in load mode you press load and then you've got the bank come up so you can pick a bank here and then you go back to load and it won't load the pattern until you hit the button now a lot of people said well there could be corrupt data in the EEPROM if you haven't stored a pattern in there before so what I put is a check in the software now so if you load a pattern and it's got rubbish in it, it will come up and say bad data and it will do its best efforts to give you something that resembles a normal sequence. So I expect... Oh no, I have saved one there. There you go. If I go that one, that one's a bad data one, there you go. So it will now create a default sequence, which isn't very pretty, but at least it's eight steps long and has relatively normal values in there. So... It's not brilliant, but it's better than it wandering off and each step taking 256 MIDI clocks and getting lost in itself. So, and again, to store, you go to the store mode, you press the store button again, and you get the bank selection. It's that simple. So we'll load that pattern. So I didn't realise I had done. But there we go. If we go back to the bank selection, pick bank one, which is the internal memory, and load that one. We can then press store, and we can say uh, we'll have it stored in bank 8, pattern 8. There we go. So right at the top end of memory. Keeps things nice and simple. I'm just going to change this patch on me MIDI sequence, I think, on me chameleon, because it's gone a little bit wonky. So... There you go. There's a new feature being added. A few people, when they were editing and playing, found that the pots were a little bit sensitive. I've improved the buffer speed, so it's it's a bit laggy now when you turn the knob for it displaying the values. A bit more than it was before, not too bad. But it's a bit more accurate, so it shouldn't flicker. Now, if you're doing something live and you don't want your pots jiggling as you change modes, what you can do is you can enable the snap mode. That's what this button does, and it only works in the control mode. What this means is now that when I go to the note mode, and I turn it, it tells me that I'm turning eight pot, pot 8 and that the pot is currently too low for the value. And if I turn that way, I've caught the value and it now snaps and it turns. So if I go to this one, I can do the same thing. And here again, I can turn this one and it says it's too low. There you go. Nice and simple. Couldn't get too far wrong. So it should prevent n not notes actually changing randomly when you're swapping between modes and this one tells me it's too high and eventually I'll go two down and it'll snap and it'll pick up the value. So from that point on it does it. As soon as you change the snap mode's re-enabled. So again I'll get too low until I find the value and then it'll snap and it'll give me the value. So that's one minor improvement I've put in that people asked for. There is one extra thing I wanted to show you which is pattern chaining. Let's turn the snap mode off. A lot of people wanted 16 notes. Now, I've only got space on the board for 8 knobs, and my circuit program that I use for designing these boards won't let me make one that's twice the width. It's the freebie version of Eagle, which is really good, but it's kind of frustrating in a way. So what you can do is you can pick your bank. We'll pick bank 1, because we like bank 1, because it's full of really cool sequences. We can load a sequence, and you see it says sing. This is actually single but I've only got four characters, so sin seemed like a good way of doing it. This is another sequence. Now I want to chain those two together. So what I can do is I can press the first sequence and hold it and press the second one, and it said chain. Oh, there you go. So now I've got the two sequences chained. There you go. Nice and simple. And to get out of the mode again, all you do is you just pick, oh, we'll have that one, and we're back into single mode. 
So we can do. And whilst it's running, you can change the patterns. The thing to note about whilst it's running and you change the patterns is it won't change the pattern until the previous one's finished. So if I pick a new pattern and this one's playing on step one or two, it won't change until it gets to eight. So we'll get that one there. We'll try and time it. There you go. So chain patterns on the fly. So it's quite flexible in the way you can do things. You can't unfortunately change patterns, chain patterns across banks. You have to chain patterns within the same bank. Um, the other thing to be aware of is when you save, there's a slight hiccup and a slight delay. It's not so noticeable on bank one, but on banks two to seven, you will notice it. Uh, I can't help that, I'm sorry. It's just the speed of this little chippy is quite slower than I expected it to be. So, not a lot I can do about that, I'm afraid. When you have patterns chained, as I have there, you can see in the load button, there's, load button, there's two patterns highlighted. Oops, press the mode button. So, what you will notice is this character on the first character on each screen changes between upper and lower case. This is to let you know which half of the pattern you're currently editing on these knobs. So if I change that one, there you go. There you go. So that was in Dine's basically put in and designed to help things a little bit easier when you're editing because I found I very quickly lost track of which half of the two sequences I was playing with. And I think that's about it. Uh, yep, that's it. Um, if you find any bugs or anything, give us a shout. Email address will pop up at the end of the video if I remember to put it in. And thanks very much for buying Gorf. There's still a few PCBs left, but not very many. Um, and I probably won't be doing any more runs, not unless I win the national lottery. Thanks very much for your time. Enjoy. Cheers.